the point I'm making is that there is no there is no lesser of two evils here. Like there is you you have someone who is very opportunistic that is you know clearly trying to make a name for themselves. You know even now after he already has his name on multiple buildings, um, and is trying to move himself up to the next level and is willing to do anything to get there. Great. There's Donald Trump, but you also have Hillary Clinton who is once again part of every evil that this. You know that 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 the that, that the U.S. regime has been a part of in the past how many how many decades and 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 she she's been a part of it she's been supportive of it she's been integral to it and I think I mean I, I was I was watching something recently where they were talking about um uh, there's this there's this excellent video on uh, on a channel called Wisecrack where they were talking about this whole idea of the lesser of two evils and whether it's more morally okay to just not vote vote at all right right and what they were saying is that if you make one candidate the embodiment of all evil then doing anything to defeat them being that becomes okay because then you can support the other candidate who's also just a little less evil and where where, I mean, where does that logic go are you can you kill people to stop a candidate who's the embodiment of all evil can you you know okay can you can you punch you know children like what can you do to right. stop this candidate who's the embodiment of all evil and i think to go deeper than that to even think that candidates create evil it's some kind of like, you know, it's, 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 it's not sensing reality correctly because the reality of the situation is that the evil is inherent within the system. Right. The logic of, of, of capitals, uh, you know, of, of capitalist thinking is the evil itself. It's not Hillary Clinton. It's not Donald Trump. It's not, um, it's not Bernie Sanders. It's not, you know, it's not, there is no socialism versus capitalism in the u.s it's a capitalist country you know that has a certain way of thinking about situations and 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 that is where the struggle lies and if someone isn't questioning that logic why bother supporting them because they're just going to create more of the same like what is hillary clinton not going to do that donald trump is going to do right and that's fundamentally the question that i think muslims have to ask themselves before they go around you know with this defeatist mentality of, oh, well, I guess we have to vote for the person who may potentially kill us less. Right. Who by now has killed us more, but may in the future kill us less. Right. It's, 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 it's crazy. It's, it's a crazy way of thinking. And I don't, and it, as Muslims will understand the reference, it's like, it's like trying to think of who is, who is nicer to Muslims, Abu Jahl or Abu Lahab. Right. right? Like, was the, was the uncle of the prophet a little better, you know, Salah Salam, um, because you know maybe he didn't get a chance to kill as many muslims before he he or was abu jahl worse and so who should you vote for should you vote for abu lahab or abu jahl what difference does it make <laughs> and it's it's a good point because what when you look at uh, you know a couple of things when you look at rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in that society though the fact that banu hashim gave him all the support and they they were boycotted uh, like even Banu Hashim, the non-Muslims of Banu Hashim were boycotted along with him. Yeah. Uh, where they were effectively put in a, what we would call today concentration camp. Yeah. You know, he never got into those tribal beefs. Like there was like beefs between uh, like, you know, uh, Banu Makhzum and uh, Banu Amaya and uh, Banu Hashim. Yeah. But he never like, even though he was being supported. Yeah. He never has tried to say that Banu Hashim is better than you guys, right? Yeah, like he, he never, never, he stayed above the fray of that. Uh, right. Tribal exactly. nonsense, yeah. right? And 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 that his his what he, his message was to call to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, to call to the Creator, right? And it kind of goes back to what you were saying about about um, uh, the sort of the sort of the issues when it comes to when you're actually voting. Do you really know what you're voting for, mm. right? So, for example, there was I remember seeing uh, this protester at um, on in the. In, she was protesting at the DNC, the Democratic National Convention, or mm -hmm. it was just into Mac. And she said, I'm never going to vote for Hillary. She was a Bernie supporter. I'm never going to vote for, uh, for Hillary. And where she was coming from was that she said that when, uh, when, her, when uh, Bill Clinton, the then president, enacted some policies which cut the, the, the amount of uh, subsidies that the poor were getting, her mother had to make a choice, right? To either feed her children yeah which is this this with jacinta or sacrifice her personhood meaning she had to become a sex worker mm. right and so just we just what 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 the, this quote doesn't capture is the pain on her face yeah she couldn't she you, you could see she struggled to tell the cameraman that choice her mother had to make right yeah. and she could barely you barely bring it out of her system yeah right yeah and and, and and to me, that's a very powerful thing because 
it's not just and as we said at the outset this is not just about this is about human beings right yeah. the system is not it's not it's not just about how the system treats muslims it's how it treats human beings how can it be that we would want to partake in a system that forces a woman to choose between feeding her kids yeah and her, and her honor like yeah. how could we as a muslim know, know, knowing or unknowingly partake in that yeah. Right. How do? What do we think we will face when, if we were to like, if 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 if, if a Muslim was to have voted uh, Clinton in in that time? Yeah. Right. Let alone the kind of the issues we've mentioned earlier. That one choice when that woman is re- was resurrected. What, what did she say to the Muslims? Right. Yeah. That voted this man in that oppressed her. Yeah. yeah. Right. How how could we face Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala on that day, yeah. knowing that we implemented and were part of that oppression? And I mean, Muslims, I don't think in America like talking about this right now. Um, but I, I remember uh, the Al Gore, George Bush election um, and Muslims heavily voted for George Bush. Like it's something that's kind of forgotten in history. But uh, this because Al Gore is vice president at the time, like the candidate was. Um, let's say, why am I saying Gore Bush? It was. Yeah, it was Gore Bush. Um, it was. Uh, what's his name? Um, Lieberman. Lieberman. Yes. And Lieberman was very, very pro-Israeli. And it was known that Lieberman was very pro-Israeli. And this was around the time of the Second Intifada. So, you know, we were seeing the brutality that was coming out of, uh, out of Palestine, um, you know, at the hands of the, of the IDF. And it was, it was difficult to, to see those things. I remember watching these newspapers and, you know, looking at them and seeing, like, a shelled child. Uh, is, it, I, I still remember that image. It stays with you because that's, you don't forget stuff like that. Um, I was quite young at the time. Um, and I remember all the all the Muslims were saying, "Well, you can't vote for that guy, so we have to vote for George Bush." It's right. it's known that we have to vote for George Bush. I don't know how this was ever found out, but there were like statistics going around that eighty percent of the Muslim community voted for George Bush. I don't know how that was ever found out, so I don't know if that's a true statistic, but there the sentiment was there for right. sure, absolutely. And the minute he, you know, got into power, and then the eight years that followed, Muslims know what have ha- what's happened. Right, he was the lesser of two evils at the time. Right, and so. But even beyond that, forget what he did to Muslims, though we can't, but still, like, put that aside for a second. Look at what he did to everybody. Look, look, at, look at the financial crisis that happened that destroyed, you know, uh, the, 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 the working and middle classes. Look at his education policies that went nowhere. Look at his treatment of, you know, any, any, any subsection of American. You look at what happened at Katrina. Right. You know, we're, 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 we're in, you have a city that's submerged and people are literally screaming for help on their rooftops and the government doesn't know what to do with it because it wasn't ready to care for them right that was on his watch and so as muslims like why 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 engage ourselves in this in in this system of dirty politics and take one of these politicians and then be responsible for that would you want to be the muslim who voted for george bush standing in front of allah you know uh, uh allah ta'ala and, and and seeing you know the the messenger of god sallallahu and having to answer for having done that why why, why would you want that for yourself and so, you know, Bush then, to me, is 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 Clinton now, and I don't I don't see how Muslims can can get 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 around that. I don't see how you get around that contradiction. Yeah, I, I think it's impossible to get around that contradiction.